again, folks. Uh, brains here. Welcome to another episode of Century 21 Tech Talk. In this briefing, we're going to be discussing the technical specifications of Fireball XL5. Fireball XL5 is an XL class patrol ship used by the World Space Patrol. It is one of 30 identical XL craft in the WSP fleet. Each patrol ship is usually crewed by at least t -t two trained astronauts, although specific assignments often require a a additional personnel. One such person is Professor Matthew Maddock, chief engineer, navigator, s scientist, and a vital member of Fireball XL5's crew. Professor Maddock is a close friend of mine and has kindly offered to discuss the t t technical details of Fireball XL5 for this briefing. And now, without further ado, I present Professor Matthew Maddock. <laughs> Thank you, Brains. It's real boss to be here. Howdy, folks. As Brains says, I'm Professor Matthew Maddock, and I guess I know just about everything there is to know about Fireball XL5. Commander Zero has given permission for me to share a few details about the craft with you. And I gather you have International Rescue's full security clearance too. Firstly, I have a small apology to make. It looks like some of the material in my presentation has been exposed to Vinter rays in my laboratory. And this has caused some of the footage to lose its color. Still can be helped, so let's get started. Well now, it might be best if I told you a little about the regular crew of XL5 before we discuss the craft. The primary crew comprises Commanding Officer Colonel Steve Zodiac, our expert in space medicine, Dr. Venus, and finally Robert, our co-pilot, and a robot of my own invention. Oh, and I mustn't forget Zuni, Venus's pet lazoon. He was here a moment ago. I wonder where he's disappeared to. I hope he doesn't cause any mischief for brains. Like the other XL class vessels, Fireball XL5 is based at Space City in the South Pacific. The craft is launched via horizontal rail beside the control tower. Steve fires the main motors in the carrier sled, and XL5 is propelled along the launch rail. As the craft approaches the incline at the end of the rail, the secondary sled motors fire, closely followed by XL5's new atomic hyperdrive, blasting fireball into the atmosphere at a terrific velocity. The launch sled is then recovered by an automated crane and return to the launch rail. Returning to Space City is a much simpler process. XL5 is brought into a hover position above the landing apron and descends on its powerful landing thruster. Conditions on board Fireball are very comfortable, but then they gotta be. We can be on patrol duty for months at a time and the ship is designed with this in mind. Some of the areas in which we spend our time include the relaxation lounge, the sleeping quarters, and, in my case, the navigation bay. The navigation bay is one of the most complex areas on the whole craft. It is equipped with an astroscope, spacemoscope, radar telescope, language decoders, and monitoring systems. Many of these sophisticated systems are linked to the main sensor dome located above the navigation bay. From the main navigation console, I can plot a course to any sector of space required. I also use the equipment to scan unidentified objects and obtain information. One of the hazards of exploring uncharted regions of space is the chance of encountering bacteria and viruses. 
that may have adverse effects on our crew. That's just one of the reasons that it's essential to have Dr. Venus with us on Fireball at all times. What she doesn't know about space medicine isn't worth knowing. Venus spends a lot of time in her laboratory near the sick bay and has been instrumental in saving us from one nasty thing or other on numerous occasions. Talking of nasty things, it's not just space viruses we have to worry about on patrol. There's also the danger of meeting some real unfriendly types. The kind of folks who would rather shoot first and ask questions later, if you know what I mean. Of course, that's something we're more than prepared for. XL5 is armed with a battery of powerful space interceptor missiles with a fantastic destructive capability. Anyone foolish enough to tangle with an XL cruiser is likely to regret it mighty fast. However, leaving such unsavory things aside, one of the more pleasant duties of a fireball vessel is to investigate new planets. And boy, do we have the right tools for the job. Fireball XL5 is capable of landing on the surface of a planet just as it does at Space City. But more often than not, the main craft remains in planetary orbit and the landing is made by Fireball Junior. Fireball Junior is a small scout vessel consisting of the forward section of the main craft. It detaches from the main body of XL5 and makes its way to the surface of the planet, while the remaining crew pilot XL5 from the secondary control room in the Astrodome. Junior is equipped with its own landing system, incorporating retro rockets and landing struts. When the craft has landed, the crew can proceed with their investigation on foot, but will usually scout the area on their jetmobiles. Fireball Junior is also designed to function as a submersible, which has come in pretty useful from time to time. When it comes to extra vehicular exploration in space, the crew make use of the ejector bay, thruster packs, and oxygen pills. A lot of people ask me how oxygen pills protect from the dangers of total vacuum, space radiation, and so forth. The answer's actually pretty simple. You see... What in tarnation? Welcome home! Oh, gee, I, 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 I'm sorry for interrupting, Professor Matic, but you see, Zuni here got hold of some OD-60 while playing in c c close proximity to some liquid alsterine. And, uh, well, say no more, Brains. Come on, you tooty lazoon. Time to get you out of here before you cause any more trouble. It's been a real pleasure being here at International Rescue today, and I hope you all get a chance to come visit Space City very soon. So long for now.